My name is Ocean Amare. On this channel, we uncover the creepiest, most unusual haunted TikToks the internet has to offer. <laughs> my bad, y'all. Oh, gosh. My name is Ocean Amare. Thank you for being here with me. Um, today, we offer... Oh, shit. I didn't fuck the whole thing up. I am so sorry. <laughs> er, cut. Rewind. <laughs> Alafia! <laughs> My name is Ocean Amare. On this channel, we uncover the creepiest, most unusual haunted TikToks the internet has to offer for entertainment purposes. Please do me a favor and like, comment, and subscribe to the Soul Child for your weekly dose of Supernatural coming to you every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. <laughs> Y'all, my soul tribe tribe is with a Y because the Y is for you, honey. That's because I love you so freaking much. Yes, I do. <laughs> I know I got a red eye right now. That's because my lashes. Everything is okay. I promise. All right. Now, let me know where you're from, what you're doing, what your favorite color is, what your favorite number is, and why are you here today? All right. Now, let's get into this video. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. Don't ask. Okay. <laughs> Next video. <laughs> I just got punched really hard. Okay, do you know who it was? No. His videos didn't initially start with such violence and only escalated after smaller deviances. For starters, his Snapchat shows him littering and recording it. In this video, Talon can be seen threatening cattle. Get out of the way, you mother. We need to run every single one of your over, you fat black. Fat. Danielle wasn't the only wow. victim who featured on Talon's Take care Snapchat. of the earth and the animal. Ah, Don't ah, litter. Oh, oh, what happened? Oh, oh, my bad. Talon would post a new video only two weeks after the Walmart incident. But this Respect one was far too. more sinister than his last Snapchat. We had two people call us and say that they saw a video on Snapchat of a shot someone sitting on a bench at the Texaco at North Hall. 911 also received a call from a witness who was at the scene at the time of the shooting. Someone's been shot, man. We're at, we're we're at, uh, um, we're at the Texaco on uh, in, uh, State, Route 1, uh, State Route 11. State Route 11, Texaco. Yes, sir. Uh, what else is near that Texaco? Uh, there is uh, No Fun Road okay. and uh, Jim Hood Road. No Fun, okay, okay. Um, the dude videoed on his phone. That's ridiculous, really sad, really freaking sad, very disrespectful. And I bet you he got a slap on the hand and taken to McDonald's for a meal before he went to jail. Ciao. Verdict of the jury is count one. We, the jury, find the defendant, Carly Madison Gregg, guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. Count two. We, the jury, look like find a the defendant, Carly Madison Gregg, guilty of attempted murder as charged in the indictment. Count three. We, the jury, find the defendant, Carly Madison Gregg, guilty of tampering with evidence as charged in the indictment. Throw her under the jail. You gotta go, bitch. Indiana father has been left devastated after his partner and three young daughters were found dead. Jonathan Newell broke down in tears as he spoke of his partner, Rebecca Hughes, and their daughters, Evelyn, eight, Allison, six, and Amelia, five, who were found dead in their home. While it is unclear how the tragedy unfolded, Newell wrote in a GoFundMe for funeral costs, these I kids are so much that. more than I can provide for their burials. Rebecca, their mom, took them with her when she passed. Police say there is no further threat to the public. Rest in peace. <coughs> You're 17, right? Yeah. Okay. No, we snuck out. Well, I snuck out. He's 18. Okay. So we were just walking around. He didn't even drive. Like, we just walked. Oh, he walked from his house on Euclid? Mm hmm Oh, jeez. And then we met up at their lane, and we weren't really doing anything. Then we went over to the church and climbed up top. Okay. And then we went, like, into the courtyard, but that's all we did. Now, if you did more, unfortunately, you guys have left behind some very telling items, okay? If, if we're going to get to the bottom of it, let's just make it the truth all at once. Let's deal with it and get it done. Yeah. You're, you're a kid, so you're not looking at it as much trouble as a nice one in the future. Yeah. It's our 18, it's over. Yeah, we've had some really serious things happen in your neighborhood and in that area, okay? We had a carjacking. Oh my God. 
and the suspect is oh my God. a young white male with a nice complexion and blue eyes. Is that you? No, it's a mm-hmm. nice complexion. I, what does I, that mean? I wouldn't know the first thing about jacking a car. Well, it's a little more to the story, but, you know, you didn't take anybody's car? Have you ever used an app called Grinder? No. Ooh. How do you feel about gay people? I'm not gay. Oh, well, that's okay. But they don't bother you? No, nobody bothers me. Okay. I just, I just, you know, some of the victims of these crimes are. Oh, he got some internal issues, honey. I hate crimes, I think. Right. You're being victimized only because of their sexual orientation. So. We're here, so I'm just going to ask them. Right. Oh, it's going to be straightforward, you know? There's no reason for me to fluff anything up. Nope. And I'm sure you guys know about the elderly woman that was trying to... Oh, my God. That was horrifying. That was horrifying. Mm-hmm. Oh, is this the boy? Did you know her at all? This is the no, boy that was recorded? out, like, on a porch. I just... That actually makes me cry. Like, how do you get to be 98 years old? Oh. Nobody lives to be 98. Okay. It's so rare. And someone else thought that it, that was okay. Like, how did that? I don't know. Like, why does your life been like that? She finna and find out it was her son. No, that's honestly probably no. privacy. Was it me? That you talked to? Is that what you're saying? Don't cry now. Fair man, it. There's something else you need to tell us. Right. Speak up. It's upsetting you so much. I've been doing this for a little while, and I have a whole gaggle of children of my own, ranging from the age of 26 all the way down to 10, so I'm pretty good with this stuff. The investigator here is stressing her maternal role, even sharing details of her own personal life. Although it is unusual for police investigators to reveal their private lives to suspects for security reasons, the investigator is playing this game to secure the trust of the suspected person and potentially open up further interrogation regarding the murder case. Let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, June's Journey. I was about to say, y'all better not. Somebody put you in a bad situation. No. No. Yeah, let's try it this way. Honestly, it always looks bad. I'm not always doing anything bad. Like, you've already gotten yourself in trouble, so. I know, and I'm mute. I don't know what to say. Is there more? Because you know it always comes out. No, it's it's not that there's anything more. It's what the fuck, dude. I'd be like, I know you're upset, son, but you need to watch your mouth. (laughs) My son, do not cuss around me. I don't play that. And he grown. (laughs) So if there's something else, let's get it all out on the table so that we know what we're dealing with. At this point, Gavin's mom changed her restrained attitude, taking the side of the police, which is a very typical role for adults when it comes to the misbehavior of their children. However, what she does not know is the terrifying truth of what her child did. There's not anything else. It's... I don't know. I'm, I'm mad at myself. Ah! What did he do? The hell is doing this to us? Goodness gracious. Next video. <laughs> hey, y'all. It's me, the money professor. And everybody wants to know, what's an IUL? And I'm going to tell you. So this is you, this is your money. And on average, you take your money and you put it in the bank. And when you put your money in the bank, it's only going to grow at a whopping 0.01%, maybe a 0.001%. And while it's in the bank, the bank is loaning out your money, compounding your money and making and keeping all of the money. And what you should do is take that money and put it into an IUL. And what's an IUL? It's an index universal life insurance policy. So when your money is inside of IUL, it is protected and it's guaranteed to grow on an average of eight to 10%. All 
All right. And so when it's in those accounts, the account grows because it is growing on a compound or uninterrupted compound interest. And when it's protected, it's protected because it has a 0% floor, guaranteed, no losses. Okay, so when the money is in that account, at the same time, it's growing cash value. And when you have that cash value, you're able to spend that money tax-free. You can use that money for leverage, such as you know college funding, uh, investing in property, or just other cash building assets. You can use that money as income replacement for retirement funding, or even build your own private bank, becoming your own family bank. And at the same time, it's a death benefit. It's a life insurance policy. So this death benefit, you are able to leave a legacy. You also, it comes with living benefits for chronically ill or, you know, critical illnesses. And also it's collateral. You are using this money to pay back this money when you are taking it while you're still alive. DM me more or hit the link in my bio if you are interested in creating your own IUL. Did you know that setting aside as little as $300 from each paycheck into a max funded IUL instead of a 401k can give you $610,000 tax-free money and will provide you with $60,000 a year tax-free in retirement? Comment IUL below if you want more information. If you're open to being a financial professional licensed in your state, please send me an email at essence at tenaciouscashflowacademy.com. Period. I mentioned it in the last video real quick about my podcast. I started it like two years ago. It's called Tequila Sunset. Please go check it out. I haven't done any new anything for it for about two years. Um, I had it active for a whole year. It was really good. Got a lot of compliments on it. Just wanted to plug that in there in case you wanted something crazier than this to listen to and to watch. Well, you can't watch it. It's only on uh, the podcast stuff like uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts and stuff like that. Tequila, sunset, please. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> and don't judge me because I was a little... It was a little, a little black woman walking and spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees. I don't know what the hell she's doing. It scares me, though. Um, no. no, you're not in trouble. A man in New Jersey reported to the police with discrimination that a nine-year-old girl was spraying something on the street, making him feel very scared. On October 22nd, nine-year-old Bobby Wilson learned about an invasive species of lanternfly at school. Just as she was contributing to environmental protection, a police officer arrived at the scene to investigate the young Bobby. As the police officer approached, Bobby showed him a kettle she used to catch harmful insects. What's that? Oh, what are you using, the sponsor? You're trying to catch him? Bobby's mother quickly arrived at the scene, and after a brief inquiry, the police okay. officer was shocked to find that the caller was their neighbor, Gordon Losh, who was also a former New Jersey congressman. At this moment, Bobby felt very guilty and said to his mother dejectedly, not Am I in trouble? Um, no. no, you're not in trouble. How many did you kill? How many trees did you save? They're bad. They're all over the yeah, place. He should be they really Afterwards, an assistant professor at Yale University's School of Public Health learned the whole story and decided to bring the nine-year-old entomologist under his command. I want to let every young boy or every young girl that or even adults too. know that nobody can that. knock you off your way to success. And we all can do our, our part to save the environment, just like me. Yes. Do not litter. That's the easiest thing you can do to do your part to save the freaking environment. Stop littering. Gosh. Who child? <laughs> Y'all know I'm an empath, honey. I can't help it. Something's unresponsive right now. He got something coming out of his mouth. What do you think is coming out? I'm, I'm not sure what it is. I know he likes to eat his own, his own poop and, and right. laying his own pee all day. Uh, everywhere, everywhere, the usual, might I add. I've been dealing with this for probably like... Since and what have you been doing to him for him to do that? Yeah, and uh, 
That's a whole reaction. When your baby pissing and doing weird stuff, let do some do some investigation. So uh, I tell him go back upstairs. A little while later, I go up there. I see a stick in his ass, like a chair leg. So I ask him, what is he doing? And he's just steady. You know what I mean? Just steady doing what he do. This ain't the first time he tried something like that. So uh, I see blood on the ground. I ask him to pull it out. You know what I mean? Blood squirted immediately. Now I'm freaking out. I'm like, hurry up! You need to get downstairs so I can get you in the shower. You know what I mean? And see what's going None on. None of that makes sense. <clears throat> so at the time, I didn't think I know. I just see that he bruised up as usual. He's so Same casual. Way, he never stopped. They find any way, any type of way, anything to use, just to put a bruise on his body. So uh, as a parent, I just put him in the shower. I mean, I put him in the bathtub to try to. Uh, you know, get some swelling to go down or or whatever the situation may have been, you know, clean him up, make sure he was good. So uh I'm sitting on the couch. And he like, Dad, come here. But he like, Dad, help. So I come up the stairs to help him. And that's when I noticed his body was cold, very, very, very cold. So I took him downstairs. And try to rinse him off, you know, to see if he'll shake out of it, wake up. I wake mean, up, uh, but you just said I he called no you to come here. Uh, knowing that he was sick to that extent. Or that, uh, or, yeah, or that, that this is going to go anywhere near this far. I mean, I just figured he was doing his normal acting out. I mean, he was kind of tweaking a little bit, you know what I mean? But, um, okay. Yeah, as far as uh, just, you know, like this, uh, this is my way of describing it, you know, just like this. But this is something that he done pulled for many years, I mean, all the time, then every day, the time you don't want to have this way, this is what he's pulling. Can't get him to eat his So breakfast. basically, you've been fucking your breakfast. son in the ass since he was I two years old. Species, so That's what you're saying. I'm like, all right, at this point, there's nothing I can do, but let him sit there and lay down. Okay. So, uh, like I said, he said, Dad, help. And I came up the stairs. That's why I'm shocked. Right now, I'm not even crying or nothing. I'm just like in shock. I'm like, my child really did help. You hear me? It's what I don't understand. Now, I'm married with girls that do nothing, so I'm going to kill them. I mean, I just don't understand it. I'm very serious. That's where I'm at. I'm, it was shocking. <laughs> yeah. Al seems to be laying the groundwork for a narrative where his abusive actions can be painted as reactions towards a difficult child. Which brings us to Al's discussion about Dakota eating his own feces. What you're about to hear now will make a shiver run down your spine. Hey yo, I'm fucking pissed. I'm pissed. <laughs> Next video! This is a deep dive into the world's most controversial haunted house and why the owner was just arrested for attempted murder. McKamey Manor opened in 2017 in summertime. That nigga should have been in jail. That's after spending a few years in San Diego where at least one woman accused them of assault with a deadly weapon. Since then, it's become the subject of numerous documentaries and news articles, including Hulu's Monster Inside, The Art of the Scare, and Netflix's Dark Tourist. The process to even get an appointment is insane. Apparently, there's a wait list of 20 plus thousand people. One, you have to be 21 or older or at least 18 with parents' consent. Two, a completed sports physical and doctor's note. Three, pass a background check. Four, FaceTime to confirm your identity. Five, proof of medical insurance. Six, sign a detailed 40-page waiver with risks such as having your teeth extracted, being drugged, tattooed, having fingernails removed, and more. And before you even sign the waiver, you have to be vetted by a private Facebook group where you're given random, disgusting tasks to prove your loyalty. Here's an example posted on the owner's Facebook. Another woman had to film herself dangling by her ankles while eating night crawlers mixed with toothpaste and mustard. The final rule is pass a drug test the day of the challenge and bring a onesie. Admission is free. All you need is a 50 pound bag of dog food, which gets donated to a local animal shelter. And if you survive the eight to 10 hours of physical and psychological torture, you win $20,000, but no one has. And according to owner Russ McCamey, no one ever will. Now, there are thrill seekers who have attempted this challenge more than once, 
But there are people with horrific stories about McKamey crossing the line, and many people want it shut down. Here's a story I found about a Colorado woman named Laura who attempted the challenge in 2016. She was waterboarded, tased, whipped, slapped in the face. At one point, she was also submerged underwater, hanging by her ankles, and blindfolded with duct tape. Then they made her dig a hole with her bare hands and lie in it while they covered her face with dirt. All she had was a straw to breathe through for 30 minutes. Then someone took a file and started scraping at her McKamey Manor tattoo, which they had told her to get in the private Facebook group. Laura finally broke down when one of the actors was holding her throat, so she repeated the safe phrase over and over, which is supposed to make them stop. But apparently the actors continued to torture her for several more minutes. Everyone who visits McKamey Manor has to film an exit video. And before turning the camera on, Russ apparently told Laura she's not allowed to say what actually happened. She better say good things only or he'll sue her for $50,000. In 2023, after the Hulu doc premiered, the Tennessee Attorney General started to investigate them. Russ McKamey responded by suing the AG and Hulu for $8.4 million. Now let's finally talk about the recent arrest. On July 17th, police responded boy, to McKamey's oh home boy, oh boy. altercation. The report states that McKamey strangled his girlfriend to the point that she lost consciousness. Two days after this, McKamey reportedly R-worded the victim and strangled her again until she lost consciousness. McKamey wow. has been charged with attempted second-degree murder, R-word, and domestic assault. He's apparently out on bond right now because he posted this statement to Facebook yesterday. He said, I know everyone has a lot of questions concerning all the recent craziness. Always try to do the right thing and simply tell the truth. This is what I always try to do, and hopefully everything will turn out just fine. His lawyer said the charges are fabricated and that the truth will come out. There are many more stories, so let me know if you want to part two. He looks disgusting. I've heard about this man many, 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 many years ago, and that's because we share the same last name, which is very weird. But, um... Yeah, I heard about him years and years ago, and I don't see how he's still up and running. Like, and as you see, people love to go to get tortured. That's weird as fuck. Hell no. Next video. Okay. <laughs> Nick. The cops are coming, babe. How many people did you see in there? I didn't see anyone. I just saw like the, the phone like rustling around and then I'm pretty sure I saw a black glove or Okay. My kids had the freaking phone and they saw it. Okay. All right. Who's there? Who is that? I'm on the phone. Hey, I have police you... on the phone. Who is that? They po Who's there? Pick up the phone. David who? Dave. Dave, pick up the phone. What is going on? Where's my husband? I have the police on the phone. You don't know yes, who he where's is? where's Nick? Do you know who this gentleman is? He's he's not there? Someone came in. Is okay, he okay? You... What's going on? Dave! Ma'am, tell me what's happening. Who is the guy you're oh, talking to? His co-worker's there, his partner. Oh my gosh, is he okay? Dave! Is that his co-worker? Dave, right, Dave, bitch, answer the, the lady. lady. Can you answer Get my question? Help. Is that his coworker? Ma'am, who is Dave? No. Can you no, please answer my questions? Ma'am. Dave's his partner. Dave's his partner. He just came into the building. I don't know. Right. Okay, I need Dave. you to tell me what is happening. I've got officers on the way. I don't know. He's just saying, oh, my God. He grabbed the phone and just said, oh, my God. Dave. Is he okay? Is he breathing? Right, answer her. Dave, answer me. Shut okay, up. I need you to stay calm, okay? I've got officers on the way. They're less than them. I've got an officer that you should be hurry. arriving you on scene. You have to hurry. You have okay. to hurry. Something bad happened. I've got something. an op. Ma'am. Go down there. Ma'am. No, I have got officers that are arriving on scene right now. I need no, you to I have take to a be deep. With my I'm okay, ma'am, ma'am, I've got an officer on scene right now, okay? I need oh you to God, take a deep breath. I don't know what's going on. She, they're going to, ma'am, ma'am, they're on scene right now, okay? I have an officer arriving and I have another coming right behind him. I need you to take a deep breath. Not what officer. is your, we need to okay, something. He, they, he we will like get, we stop. will get, we will get him the help, okay? We've got an officer going on scene right now. What is your name? 
Oh, he's shot. Oh, he's shot. Dave, is wow, he okay? Is he okay? Honey. Shit. Next video. No, 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 bro. That's my daughter. What are y'all doing, bro? That's my daughter, bro. Give me oh. that, bro. That's my daughter. Bro, that's my daughter. Ooh, Lord Jesus. That's my daughter in there. What are y'all doing? I ain't even no Christian, so don't get offended. Sorry, y'all. You know me. Please give my daughter. Please don't dump his daughter's ashes out. Please don't dump his daughter's ashes out. Please. Body cam footage has surfaced showing Illinois cops searching an urn during a traffic stop and insisting it was full of drugs when it actually contained the remains of a man's two-year-old daughter who had been starved to death by a wicked mother mm. now in jail for murder. Dartavius Barnes is suing the city and six of its cops for opening small urn containing his daughter's ashes and desecrating it. Oh, in the video, police tell God. Barnes they found a substance in his car that tested positive for drugs. Barnes says that while he gave the officers consent to search his vehicle, he didn't believe that they would break open the sealed urn. He says it's an urn with his daughter and daughter. He alleged in the complaint that the officers unlawfully searched him and his vehicle, unsealed and opened the urn containing his daughter's ashes without consent, and spilled some of them during the process. In a response to the lawsuit, the officers denied the allegations and said they're entitled to qualified immunity as their conduct was justified by an objectively uh, reasonable belief no, the fuck that it was wasn't. lawful court record show i'm so <laughs> this documentary came out yesterday and i need to know if you guys think this girl is innocent in 2017 caitlin conley was convicted of murdering her ex-boyfriend's mother apparently she poisoned her and is now serving a 23 year long sentence in state prison in this documentary she is heavily interviewed and maintains her innocence and even gives up theories as to who she thinks committed this crime. If you love documentaries, make sure to hit follow because I post daily and you'll never miss out on what to watch. Caitlin believes that it was actually her ex-boyfriend's father who committed this crime. Shortly after the murder, the husband suspiciously got in a romantic relationship with his sister-in-law. This documentary features extensive oh, wow. interviews with Caitlin who is in prison, never before seen police interviews and audio recordings of the victim the day that she was poisoned. Let me know what you think Think about this in the comments and if you're looking for more interesting stories i just released my podcast bonus features the first episode is available on spotify and features a crazy story of amnesia and true crime why are you tormenting me i didn't kill your children you killed my daughter you sit up here playing on your phone playing in your pocket all blue in your hair like that you should be in this courtroom crying you should be remorseful you should have some empathy as a mother to mother she don't have no empathy, she doesn't have no sympathy, she doesn't have no morals, and she really do not care. And that's how I honestly, truly feel. But if she would have came at me a different type of way, I probably would be on her side saying, be lenient. I can't do that for with a person like that. No way in hell can I pray for her. I can't. I would have. All she had to do was stop. Or instead of calling a ride to pick her up from the gas station, she could have called the police. Clearly she got a cell phone, right? Because she texting and driving, right? So you didn't even call the police. You just disregard who hit somebody and don't look in their rearview mirror. Or who hit something and not look up. She ran over this baby. So I'm just asking you, I'm begging you, parent to parent, it's unacceptable. Nobody understand how I feel. Like, I don't, I don't even know what else to say. Like, she needs to get the max that she can get. Because if she would have came at it a whole different way, I would be right with her, praying for her, and asking you not to give her the max. I even would have changed my story, but once Monday happened, I know she is not sorry. Period. Her and her the boyfriend in the and her background sister jumping. Up. How are you sorry? Wow. Do y'all know anything about that case? I think that they were related or something. Are their neighbors something? And the girl ran over her baby and kept going. 
And she has a daughter around her age as well, I believe. I think I heard something about that story, but don't get me to, I don't know. Don't let me a line, honey. <sighs> Prayers to the family, condolences to the family. If y'all haven't heard about Trellis, well, baby, let me tell y'all, because this story right here is so sick. Trellis was only 16 years old, and this all happened in 1994. So, boom, this one morning, Trellis was on her way to school. Like always, and like the whole school used to always take this little pathway to get to school. It was like a little shortcut. So this was Trellis' normal routine. But boom, this one morning, Trellis had took that path, and she never even made it to school. So Trellis stayed with her auntie named Pam. So Auntie Pam, like, hold on, baby, what Trellis said? Auntie Pam called okay. the family child, and the family had did some little investigating. They went up to the school. The Wait. school said, um, no, Trellis never came here. And they like, for real? Oh, hell no. So they get to searching around for Trellis. Going to her friend's house, mm -hmm. and her friend's like, no, like, we haven't seen Trellis all day. A couple of days later, child, they found Trellis' body. And they said, oh, oh hell I no. don't even want to say this. Well, I can't even say it, but I'm going to tell y'all a little something on what had happened. Somebody had hit her on top of the head and then r word her and proceeded to... And everybody like, who is wow. this to Trellis? Like, she was such a good kid. For years, y'all, they couldn't figure out who did this. But it was this dude who used to go around, like, R-wording people who took that path. And it was, like, victims coming out saying, like, yeah, he did that to me. And they got the DNA sample, blah, blah, blah. And they was like, okay, he did it. What if he did the same thing to Trellis? But when they did mm. the little DNA match, all that, it wasn't a match. But he was still one Aww. of the suspects. And for years, y'all, they still haven't figured out who did this to Trellis. When I first heard this story, y'all, I was just in shock. I'm in disbelief because, like, who would do this to her? All that girl wants to do is go to school. But, yeah, y'all, that's what happened to Trellis. And don't forget to follow my backup account. This is my backup account, by the way. And, yeah. <laughs> Hi, pretty. Shout out, Trellis. Um, well, RIP. Sorry, baby. Not shout out. May you rest in peace. I send my condolences to you and your family. Hey, y'all. I want to tell you why I love being an entrepreneur and why I love what I do. I am a financial professional, and I love, love, love adding value to families. For one, what we do, we do it for free. There's lots of people out here that will charge you, you know, hundreds of dollars an hour to get financial education. But me and my firm, we love to educate families for free because it's the value of what we have to offer. As a financial professional, I help families with retirement planning, with college funding, with taxes, with interest, with debt control, with uh, life insurance, all kinds of life insurance, term, whole, universal. Uh, we have a thing called IUL, which is an index universal life insurance policy. And that is one of our prized possessions that we love, love, love to teach families about and set up policies with. So if that's something that you may be interested in, please contact me in the DM that you see this at. We will reach out to you and we will set up an appointment to have one on FaceTime and we will go from there and get you set up for what you need. Whatever you do, do not feel bad for this woman. This woman's name is lovely Kristen Antoinette Johnson and she had a six month old baby. But one more thing is she was a severe drug addict and she would often invite friends over to her house or go to her friends houses to do drugs. When she would do this, she would just lock her son up in a car seat and leave him inside the house oh, wow. and she would place him in the attic where she wouldn't be able to hear him. Oh, well, wow. on this particular occasion, the little baby went four days without oh, any food wow. and started starved to death. Apparently the baby had diaper rash so severe his skin was literally falling wow. off. When she found the baby his body was already decomposing oh, and she wow. still took him to the ER and got arrested there. And she was sentenced to 20 to 80 years in prison for the murder of her baby. Should have been 80 to life. The fuck? Put her under the jail. Give her the chair. Okay? That's crazy. Crazy. It took 35 years to identify her, but they still do not know who did it. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of the Bozier Jane Doe. Review Hello. discretion is advised. This is a man named John Chesson Sr. On January 28th, 1981, he decided to Kinda take his two like young him. sons hunting for the very first time in Bozier Parish, Louisiana. 
When they got to this exact area, he directed his two sons, like his who again had never been son. hunting before, to go to this like brushy area while he waited by his truck. Moments later, the two young boys come screaming back because they said they found a body. So the three of them got into the truck and they booked it to the nearest police station where they reported the, the body. These clay recreations always terrify me. But when police arrived, they found the young woman's body. She was probably a late teenager, maybe early 20s. She had been stabbed eight times and the coroner would later determine she had been dead for likely a month. The knife was actually found wow. next to her body. However, to my knowledge, no fingerprints were ever found on it. She was wearing this pair of shoes and a pair of pants with this unique belt buckle. The grandmother of this teenage girl, Carol Ann Cole, had been in contact with Louisiana police because her granddaughter had been missing for some time. And it was believed that she was in Louisiana when she went missing. Once the body was discovered, the grandmother was like, can we determine if that's Carol? But the police at the time reassured her for whatever reason that it right. wasn't her. Later, they would come up with this clay figure of the victim, but it yielded How no you tips. Identify and my the case went cold for, for 35 years. A new detective working on the case decided to start a Facebook page wow. to help identify this woman. And eventually, it would lead back to the grandmother of that teenage girl. So then they were able to do the genealogical DNA testing and comparing to her family, and it was a match. The body, in fact, was that of Carol Ann Cole. She was 17 years old. Originally from Kalamazoo, wow. Michigan, she was <sighs> living with her grandmother, but then she decided me. to move in with her mother in Texas. She got involved in alcohol and illegal substances, which ended up getting her put into a drug abuse program, which she then ran away from, and she ran away from Texas. But when she did so, she kept calling her family to say where she was, which is how the grandma knew she was in the Louisiana area. But then suddenly she stopped calling, and then the body showed up. Now at one point, God damn it, get out of here, you! Shoot! Looking like a zebra's disease taint. Yeah, at one point he confessed, but then obviously he's him, what? so it wasn't true. <laughs> the main suspect they had, however, was this guy. Remember him? John Chesson Sr., <laughs> who made his two young boys specifically go to an area where Yo, he found Brandon. a body. So by 2015, his wife had already died. One of the sons who was with him that day ended his own life, and he himself would die by 2016. Now, in 2015, just before he died, the detective was able to interview him, and guess where he was? In prison. For what? For murder. He denied having anything to do, however, with right. the murder of Carol Ann Cole. But his daughter would say otherwise. His daughter would recall that after seeing her actual image, that there was a young girl who was brought to their house by her father. She was there for like a day or two, but then one day when she went to school and she came back, the girl was no longer there, but her stuff was. Apparently, this teenage girl was a hitchhiker, and John Chesson had picked her up. He was known to pick up hitchhikers. The daughter was able to take the detective to where he actually picked up this teenage hitchhiker. And it was in the exact same location where Carol had last made a phone call to her grandma. It was at a payphone. That's where he picked her up from. Now, when this teenage girl suddenly was no longer in their house anymore, his daughter didn't want to like press the issue because he was abusive and very mean. And then he died in prison in 2016 and they never really got sure. the truth out of him. I'm sorry, but the entire situation where he decided to suddenly take his two sons hunting for the very first time, he brings them to the exact location where a body would be and he points his two sons, go to that area, for whatever reason, where they find the body, it really sounds like he did it. And what a, if he did, what an asshole for making his two young children go find a body. But mm -hmm. at this point, this was a, a, yep. a more recent computerized image of her, by the way, before she was identified. But Carol's murder has gone unsolved. Chesson may have been her killer, but also he may not have been. Could have just wow. been crazy coincidence. And so they are still asking for help from the public. If you have any information about this case, do please call them. You can call them at 318-965-3418. Call them, y'all. You know anything. You can report your information anonymously. You don't have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know. Deep. Deep, deep. Rest in peace, mama. Miss lady. Next video. Hey.
This is the story of Bolivia Williams, age 33, a pregnant mother of four who was shot and left to die by her boyfriend, Naji Leach, age 31. Naji a thug who was also said to be sick in the head got her pregnant, celebrated gender reveal with her then he decided to kill her when she found out somethings about him. He shot her, fled, changed his appearance and also went on social media to taunt her days after he killed her. This story will be taking us to Regalwood, North Carolina. Regalwood is a small, peaceful town in North Carolina, Boy. known for its friendly community and family-oriented atmosphere. Kick that With a population of just reveal? over 1,000 people, Regalwood is an intimate and close-knit community with plenty of friendly faces. Crime risk is moderate for Regalwood. The crime rate in Regalwood is very low. The town has a very active police department that works hard to keep the community safe. Bolivia Williams, age 33, was a lively young lady who was loved by every- That's 30 plus year old baby, looking like me in our 20s. <laughs> Carolina but lived in Regalwood. She studied at Southeastern Community College. Bolivia is known to be an entrepreneur. She could do some braids. Or she was getting her hair done. Olivia was a mother to four adorable kids and was now 25 weeks pregnant, about to having her fifth child before this tragic incident occurred. about her kids. She was a really big fan of yoga. I can't sing, y'all. I be trying, but I can't sing. I just love music. Like, I love music. You better do that yoga. I used to pop that pussy on the handstand yes. when I was younger. Namaste. I was a wild child. <laughs> All right. Next video. Pay attention to the girl in the white shirt. This is 18-year-old Nia Wilson. She's getting off the train to transfer, like many other people in the crowded station. But watch again. This time, don't look at the girl. Instead, watch the man behind her in the white and gray hoodie. He follows her off the train, pulling his hood down and taking off his sunglasses. He looks around, as if to plan an escape route. Then, he reaches down, pulling something out of his pant leg. Look closer. The item he pulled out is a knife. He quickly covers it up with his sweatshirt, but he has it at the ready, and no one else in the busy train station has noticed. The girl he's following, Nia, is on her way home with two of her older sisters, Tashaya and Latifa. On they just called their dad to let him know they should be back soon, and they wait for the train doors to open. But moments later, the man attacks. Taking advantage of the panic that follows, he blends in with the crowd. He runs down the stairs and exits the station, running through the gate before seeing police outside. Recorded on an officer's body cam, he pretends to be a witness to the attack, telling them someone was injured on the platform. He waves them up and they run to the scene to help the girls, unknowingly letting their attacker get away. He escapes from the station without anyone chasing after him, and he runs to a nearby parking structure. Then, he changes into a different hoodie putting the other in a backpack, and he takes off his shoes and sweatpants. Next, he runs out and over to a bus stop. When a bus pulls up, he fakes an injury so he can get a free ride. After getting off the bus and away from security cameras, he disappears. He believes he thought of everything to escape justice. But in this footage, police will find the crucial mistake he made during his getaway that will ultimately lead to his capture and avenge the sister's attack. It's July 22nd, 2018. Around 9.45 p.m., the girl's dad gets a frantic call from his daughter, Tashaya. I couldn't understand what she was saying. 
All I could recognize her saying was Bart. I figured maybe they got in a little skirmish with somebody on Bart. Unsure of what he'll find, he rushes to the car right away and drives to the MacArthur Bart Station or Bay Area Rapid Transit. All he knows is that his girls are in trouble, but what he sees there is worse than he could ever imagine. When I got there, I see the bunch of ambulance and police. I see them loading the teeth in the ambulance. I seen blood dripping down her arm, and I asked her what happened. She just said, go check on Leah. I turn around, I run up the stairs at Bart, and I see my daughter's body. <sighs> It's the hardest thing I ever experienced in my life, <laughs> seeing my baby dead. It's impossible for Nia's dad to wrap his head around what he's seeing. In less than three minutes from when she was stabbed in the neck, Nia has died. Her dad also has the heart. Ooh, wow. Rest in peace, beautiful Nia. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Mm -hmm. Next video. She had her guts ripped out in the closet. Meet Fidel Lopez, a 24 year old Cuban mechanic. On September 20th, 2015, at 3 30 a.m., Fidel dialed 911 from his apartment in Sunrise, Florida, reporting that his girlfriend, Maria Nemeth, was unwell and unresponsive. 911, what is your emergency? Hello? 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 Now, when you called number one, was she was she still breathing? No, man, she wasn't. She wasn't breathing. She wasn't. I was trying to give her CPR, man. I, I remember I was kissing her and put some air in her stomach. Was like up and down, man. And she wasn't breathing. I, mean, I don't know when somebody is there or not because I've never seen the body before. Okay. You I mean, said um, when you first went into the bathroom and you saw her, she was breathing. She was breathing. She was conscious. All right. She was like. <sighs> And that's what I call 911. And where was she in the bathroom again? She was like in the toilet, between the toilet and the and the and the shower. The, 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 the okay. The, is is it a is it a, a shower or a bathtub? Uh, yeah, the a bath. So it's not just like a, like a, like a jacuzzi. You know, okay, you know. so it's not a, just a stand-up shower. No, if you want to no. take a bath, you can take a bath in it. Exactly, exactly. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know how to say that. No, no, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's okay. A, like a... Was she in the tub? No. I was, I was trying to put her there, but I couldn't lift her up. I mean, I was strong. And I don't want her to hit her head or hit something or something. You right, know? right, sure. You know? And uh, but the yeah, last I thing I do is that. put some okay. cold water on her face. I open the shower. Okay. And put some cold water on her face to see if she reacts. And I start, hey, baby, you okay? Baby, you okay? I start screaming like a motherfucker and nobody here. You know? I don't know. Neighbors might be here, might be here me scream. Okay. I was screaming for, for help. Right. Is that what you were screaming is help? Yeah. But it says he shoves his arm into his girlfriend, ripping out her guts. Um, how is that even possible? And then he don't have no blood on him. Like, he got a whole white shirt. With his, he should have blood all over him, if that's the case. I don't know. That's weird. If anybody know anything about that story, let us know in the comments, please. Thank you. Next video. <laughs> 911, what's your emergency? Can't find my mom. It's okay, sweetheart. I'll help you. Can you tell me your name? My name is Anna. Hi, Anna. Do you know where you are right now? Are you at home? I'm at home. My hair's back in the hair. Can you help me? There. 
I understand, but we'll find your mom. I promise. Is your dad there? I don't have a dad. Oh, okay. Is there anybody else? Just me and my kids. Oh, okay. Well, just stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay. Somebody's going to be there really soon. Maybe I can keep you company. What's your favorite color? Purple. Oh, I love purple. I have a purple dress. Oh, wow. I bet it's beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. They're almost there. Welcome. They're almost there. Oh, that was so sweet. Um, but is it me or did that sound a little AI-ish on both ends, the baby and the operator? But to say the least, I'm happy she was saved and she saved her brothers and sisters as well. Smart, smart, smart baby. Teach y'all babies 911. Teach y'all babies about all body parts, including the private parts. You know, we do eyes, nose, ears, mouth. Make sure y'all go cookie, pee pee, nobody touch it, shit like that. Cause I did that with my son, don't play. Mm -mm. Next video. On TikTok, my mother made it seem like we had the perfect relationship, but she took my life for a reason that shocked the entire world. My name is Kaylee Priest. And when I was three years old, my mom used to post happy videos of me dancing with her. She pretended to have a very good relationship with me, to get views on social media, but she was hiding a very big secret. She hated me and didn't take care of me, hit me and didn't even look at me. Wow. I was a burden to her. Then she got a new boyfriend, Callum. They were totally in love, and sometimes they even hit me together. But unfortunately, on August 8th, 2020, all hell broke loose. My mother invited Callum to our house to have relations. They locked me in a room while they consummated the act. But I was very sick, and I started crying very loudly. I disturbed them during the act, which made them so angry that they hit me so hard that I started vomiting and passed out. After that, they laid me down on the bed and went back to doing their thing. It wasn't until the next morning that they noticed a strange silence in my room. And when they returned, I wasn't breathing. And what they did next shocked the world. Follow the profile for the continuation and comment part two. What did they do next? They tried to get rid of her body? What did they do next? The fuck? Dog poop off of the floor. They made her use a, uh, a toothbrush of her being. Um, they made her brush her teeth with it afterwards. I think it's called um, mace or pepper spray or something. And they sprayed it in her face and her face was burned and her eye was swollen shut and stuff. And they hit her in the face real hard and made her lips swell up really bad. I was so scared. I just, I've never seen anybody do that to someone before. On March 27th, 2011, the Brooks family was finally happy. Sherry, the matriarch of the family, had come up with a perfect plan to kill intellectually disabled Vera Jo Regal. Yeah, you heard it right. It wasn't a one-person job. The entire family had participated in the murder. Sherry's son and Vera's boyfriend, old, Zachary Brooks, video hit Vera meet you, so honey. much that every bone like, on her face was broken. Shit. Sherry's other son, Chucky, made Vera dog poo. Daniel Bixler, who was the son of Sherry's cousin, shoved the knife into her... Daniel's girlfriend, Nicole, kept asking Sherry if she could kill Vera right there. But Sherry had a different plan. She wanted Vera to turn into, quote, Hamburg. What the fuck? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ooh, ciao. Next video. Well, you already know what time it is. You reached the end of another video. <laughs> Thank y'all for being here with me, honey. I appreciate you. I truly, truly, truly do. Um, I do not take your time for granted. And to all you trolls, hating ass trolls, honey, nothing about me over here is fake except for these wigs and these green eyes, okay? And these nails. Don't play with me. Go take that shit somewhere else and go play with your mama, okay? Anyway, <laughs> thank you for being here with me. <laughs> I am actually this person that you see on this camera. Don't play with me, okay? Anyway, let me...
<laughs> Y'all are my soul tribe. Tribe is with the Y because the Y is for you, honey. And that's because I love you so freaking much. I truly, truly, truly do. Again, I appreciate your time. Don't take it for granted. Y'all already know what you can do with this, honey. Give it to who? Your auntie, your mommy, your daddy, your niece, your nephew, your uncle, your granddaddy, your grandmama, your god family, your bestie, and your enemies. Because anybody can get it. <laughs> Period. But anyway, y'all, um, I love you. I do. Not all of you, because some of y'all just play too much. But the rest of y'all, I love you. <laughs> I'm out. This is Ashe. <laughs>